Hello and welcome to another short drawing lesson. This week we're going to draw the 350 horsepower Sunbeam, which last week, 100 years ago, set the last ever land speed record on a closed circuit. So we'll start with the front wheel over here. And the next wheel, one, two, and a half wheels further back. And I'm going to do this car in motion, so that's why I've got a slight kind of lean on these circles, these ellipses, they're slightly, they're not perfectly round. Um, so now we need a chassis to sit just on top of the centres, a nice straight line front to back, a pair of those, quite chunky. And then there's an under tray, which is again just a horizontal line halfway between the ground and that chassis rail. Right there in the end. The radiator is level with the front, the middle of the front wheel. And it would be vertical, but because I'm going to do this car in motion, I'm going to do it slightly leaning. When you see old photos of these cars, because of the shutters that the cameras had, they have a kind of lean, a sort of lean on them and it looks like they're going really fast. Um, so I'm going to do that in the drawing. So every time there's supposed to be something vertical, I'm going to just tilt it slightly. So there's the radiator. The top edge is a bit less than a half a wheel, maybe a third of a wheel above, up here. Another horizontal line. And the front of the car has got a cowl on, for a streamlining purposes, I suppose. And it sticks out slightly in front of the front wheel, so a slight lean, and it tapers slightly, so it's slightly, slightly lower than the radiator itself. The tail, if you could come to the back wheel here and just go down a bit and then out towards the back and stop when you get about half a wheel further back. That's probably where the tail is going to come to. So the bottom edge of the under tray will need to come up to meet that. And your top edge will need to drop down to meet it. And you get a nice streamlined, simple shape. The tail's kind of held on at a slight angle like that there. The back edge of the bonnet is at your one wheel mark. So if you come back one wheel, remember that's usually a vertical, but we're going to do a slight tilt. And um, we need a big exhaust, exhaust pipe that sits below the top edge of the wheels, but above the chassis, so in this space here. Another pair of long horizontal lines. And it comes out just where the wheel is, basically. And you can make you can make it look like it's coming out of the ex the uh, bonnet by darkening this bit above, so it looks like a, a hole in the bonnet. And the bonnet's held on with a couple of straps, again leaning. And we need a part for the driver to sit, which is a sort of U shape in this space here. And you can have a slight kick up here just for the cockpit. It made that a bit small, but we'll, we'll see. We'll squeeze the driver in somehow. Um, so now we can get on with some details. So we've got the word sunbeam written up here. It's quite tricky to get your spacing right sometimes. There's a number one on the front, because this car was used for races as well as record setting. There's a nice row of rivets running along here and down here and a tiny aero screen. The exhaust pipe has a few joins and also when it gets to where the cockpit is you can thicken it up slightly because there's a it's been wrapped with some kind of heat resistant rope to stop you burning your elbow. And uh, on the back here, there's a funny stick, which I have no idea what that is. And a fuel filler. Um, and usually in the, I can't quite see it in my reference picture, but usually chassis have various bolts and things coming through, fixing things on the inside. Here we've got some spring fixings and a cable for the rear brakes. There are no front brakes. And the under tray usually has some, some joins in it too. 
So there's your basic side view. And now we've got to add a bit of depth and a bit of speed. So we'll add the ground slightly below the wheel so it's flying along. Brooklyn's was a very bouncy, bumpy circuit, so you do often see photos of big cars with all their gra all their wheels off the ground. There's some dust and stones. You need to show the wheels on the far side, that really helps give it some depth. And you can darken the underside, because that's in shadow. And we need a driver, so his head will be about halfway in the middle there. This is Ken Olmley Guinness, he was one of the Guinness Brewing family. And he had a, quite a few exciting cars and set lots of records and won lots of races. This car later on went to Malcolm Campbell, he set even more records with it, but he changed the tail quite a lot, so it's much longer now if you see the car today. Um, so now we need some whiz lines and some general kind of dust and scratches. And you can now firm up any of, you know, a few of these lines because hopefully you've been drawing quite lightly to this stage in case you make need to make any changes. But now I can just darken up some of these bits. If you like, you can add some shading to the car. It's got partly bare metal and partly painted. So the tail is painted. I would say if you do do this, just go very lightly you don't really want to muddy your um, your line work. So you just give a suggestion of which bits are painted and which bits aren't. But try not to go too too heavily, otherwise you might start losing your lines. If you do lose any of them, you can just firm them up a bit a bit more, but. You can end up chasing them around and just getting heavier and heavier and then you lose that initial uh, the nice energy of the original sketch. So you just have to be a little bit careful with shading. And I think that will do. There's Ken Olmley Guinness to uh, I think 133 miles an hour at Brooklyn's 100 years ago. Hope you enjoyed that. Tune in next week for another one. Let me know in the comments if there's a particular car you'd like me to try next. I've got a few to get through but um, if it's a particularly good one I'll try and add it to the list. And see you again soon. <laughs>